Hello everybody, hope you all are doing well. <clears throat> uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about something and, and maybe it'll be a little bit of an encouragement to you. And this could happen to all of us and it does from time to time. Uh, you know, we get... <clears throat> overwhelmed by things that happen in our lives we we get you know overwhelmed by what happens in our lives and we just start to dwell on it and we get discouraged and it's so easy to get discouraged a lot of times uh but as Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. The reason that he said this to them, being the the, the the disciples, he was saying that he said, you know, let not your hearts be troubled. The reason he said this to them is their hopes for the kingdom of God are soon to be dashed. The whole, <clears throat> while they had been following him, they were expecting him to establish his kingdom on the earth at any moment. They had, according to the words of Peter, forsaken all to follow him. He had tried to tell them that he was going to suffer death at the hands of sinful men, but would rise again the third day. But it just hadn't sink in. It just didn't sink in, you know. Uh, he knew that when they saw him die on the cross and his body put in the tomb, that they were going to be dismayed and troubled. Their hearts were troubled because he had been talking about going away from them. They had come to depend and rely on him. There was always love and excitement around him. Having been with him for three years, um, they could not imagine life without him. One of the common causes for troubled hearts is uncertainty of the future. There are many people who die a thousand deaths fearing one. They're, you know, how will I survive? How will I get by? Yesterday is gone. I do not worry much about that unless my deeds Yesterday may come back to haunt me tomorrow, but it is tomorrow that gives me great concern. The answer for the troubled heart. <clears throat> Jesus said, believe in me. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. He is saying, trust me, the cure for a troubled heart is always trust in Jesus. Looking forward to the glorious future in my father's house. There are mansions I go to prepare a place for you. He had been telling him this, uh, that when he was going away, now he is telling them why he is going away. He is going to prepare a place for them in his father's house. Uh, David had spoken about the Father's house, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Um, their tomorrows were going to be very bright with excitement. Their futures were secured. He had told them not to worry about tomorrow, what they were going to eat, drink, or wear, that their father knew all about them and would take care of of their tomorrows heathens heathens worry about such things but our, our father fed the birds clothed the fields and surely he would take care of all of their needs let not your heart be troubled i will come again to get you and take you to my father's house that you might be with me forever surely the hope of every believer is that of eternal life in the beauty, love, and joy in the kingdom of God. Someone has said, when the outlook is bad, try the uplook. 
he will pray that the Father will give them another comforter to abide with them forever. The word comforter in Greek is correct one, I think. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which means one who comes alongside to hell. I have been alongside of you, helping you for the last three years. Now I will ask the Father to give you the Holy Spirit who will come alongside and help alongside of you and help you. When he comes, he will teach you of all things, bringing to your remembrance the things I have said to you. We read so many times that how that later they remember the words of Jesus. John chapter 2, verse 22, when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. John chapter 12, verse 16, these things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they these things, that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. Acts eleven fifteen. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost uh, fell on them as on us at the beginning. Acts chapter 11, verse 16. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John, indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. He will not leave them comfortless here. The Greek word is orphanous, which we get our English word orphan. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I'm, I'm not deserting you. I will take care of you. Whatever you need, just ask the, just ask the Father in my name and he will give it to you. The Father loves and will manifest himself to you. No, we ha now have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with us. The Holy Spirit alongside to help the Son has promised to come to them that they would not be as orphans, and the Father who loves them will manifest himself to them. He and the Father will come and make their abode with us. They will come and live in us. The heaven and of heavens cannot contain him, yet he lives within my heart. Our bodies have become the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in us. The triune God believes in me. If God be for us, who can be against us? Said, John said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let not your hearts not, not, let not your heart be troubled, for peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote to the Philippians about the peace that uh, passed human understanding, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Um, Jesus was at perfect peace with the Father and thus was at perfect peace with himself. You can never have peace with yourself until you have peace with God. This peace that he gives to you is not as the world gives. The, the world can often have peace for a moment, but it quickly fades away. Look at how quickly the joy of the world fades. Look at, look at how fickle the love of the world is. You can be the world's darling today and its goat tomorrow. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is now a command of Jesus to his followers. Do not worry and do not fear. What does this mean if you're worried or fearful? Well, it either can mean one of two things. Either you have a lack of trust in his words 
or you're not yet secure in his love, for perfect love casts out all fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Now, you know, like I said, it's easy for circumstances in life that happens, and that's for all of us that we get that, you know, we get down about things, we get depressed about things, and I can say for myself in my own life that I have, and, you know, whether it be something someone says to us or whether it be if someone's wronged us or we've something that we, you know, that we, we you know, start to dwell on and like that's the only like and, and and give your full attention and thought to it you know the only way to have peace with jesus christ that's the only true peace you know this world you may have a little peace in this world but it's not nothing compared to the the peace that the lord jesus christ gives and the only way to have it is to you know is to put your faith and trust in him you know, and that's, I mean, that's the only, you know, you can, you know, say, you know, you can have all the money in the world, you can have all the material possessions, but if you don't have peace with God, then what good is it? There's only one way to have peace with God, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that's, you know, Jesus Christ was fully man, fully God. He came to this earth, lived a sinless, perfect life that you and I could not live. And he died on the cross, was crucified He to pay for all of our sins, past, present, and future with his own blood, and was buried and rose again three days later. And he's alive and seated on the right hand of the, of the Father. You know, uh, God is not a God of the dead, but of the living. Uh, you know, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That is the only way to have true peace. You know, when you, you, you know, Jesus promised to them over and over in the book of John several times that he who believes on me will have everlasting life, eternal life, which means forever, forever and ever. And it cannot be lost. Because once you believe on him, Ephesians 1, verse 13, and whom also after that you trusted, which is trusted in Christ, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. Uh, you know, salvation is a one-time deal. It's not a process where you work your way cl like climbing a ladder. It's when you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ alone and what he did for you. That, that it, uh, and that's what it means. You know, there's people that talks about, uh, you know, being born again. Well, that's what, you know, being born again what it is is when you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you believe on when you believe on Him. It's it, it, you, you're depending on Him. You're putting your whole faith and trust on what He's done. He is the object of your faith when you believe on Him. And when you do that, you are born again. That means, in other words, as a spiritual birth that happens spiritually. It don't happen. You know, it doesn't happen you know, by physically something that you're physically doing, you know, for to make something, you know, is, is, or your good deeds or something like that is his, is his work. It's what he did. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about him. It's not about what we do or what we're doing or trying to attain to do. It's what he did for us. And when, you know, you put you put your whole faith and trust in what he did, and solely on what he did, because he he's the object of our faith. He should be not you know that plus well what we do you know because it's not like I said about what we do. It's what Christ has done for us. It's all about that, and you know may we never forget that. May we always remember that because that is so very important to salvation that is, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me,
excuse me, that is so very important. You know, born again means of a, it, it really the definition is of a person converted to a personal faith in Christ. And it's talking about with reference to John chapter three, verse three, marvel not when I said you must be born again. That's, in other words, whenever someone believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, they're converted to a personal faith in Christ. The personal faith in Christ is ye believe that he died to pay your sin debt in full on the cross. That, that um, you know, he's God manifest in the flesh. He paid for all of your sin debt on the cross. He did what you, he did something for you that you could not do for yourself. And he paid for all of your sin, past, present, and future. And that he was buried and he rose again three days later, according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Um, you know, when it, in John three sixteen it says, For God so loved the world, he loved us so much, each and every one of us, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life, which means forever. That's not some temp. He didn't say whoever believes in me, well, he'll have a temporary life until you lose it. You can't lose it. You can, you can't lose uh, an eternal life, eternal life, and a free gift. Because salvation is clear. The Bible says that it's salvation is a free gift that's given unto us. Um. <clears throat> through faith it's by grace through faith it's not by grace but or through faith but but it's by grace through faith god's unmerited favor that's what god's that's what grace is grace is god's unmerited favor that's us he's given to us what we do not deserve that it's grace is god's riches at christ's expense uh now, you know, we should always stick to the simplicity that's in Christ, I believe. And, you know, when I'm not, you know, when I'm, you know, when, you know, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's the only way to have true peace. You can, you can, you know, people search in this life for things, for, uh, you know, material possessions try to have peace through having all kinds of money and stuff like that but that's not going to bring you peace it might bring it to you for a short time but it's not going to last because you can't take you know we, we, we the bible says that we bring nothing into this world and we take nothing out with us when we go and when you you can't you know take your money with you what good is it going to be it's just going to fade away just like all the other material possessions you know you can try to be happy by having material possessions and it's not nothing wrong with a person having that i'm not say, saying that but if you if you think that well that's going to bring me peace in this life i you know you, there are people out there that have all the money in the world they have everything at their feet that they think that they need and they don't have peace why do they not have peace because they well because they have not been born again they have not believed on the lord jesus christ they've not trusted christ as their personal savior they've not received the free gift of salvation that he offers to all men you know he's a savior to all men especially to them that believe and you know god is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance which is um, metanoia in the Greek that means you're changing your mind you change your mind about who you are and, and what God has done for you you didn't believe before now you do believe the person that when you believe your faith you have repented that that's what repentance is it does not mean to stop sinning as, as a lot of people makes it out to be and as far as that goes you know, when we're born again, the spiritual, we're born again spiritually. It's not of a physical thing. Well, let me look, make sure my life's changed. And that well, that's how you know if somebody's born again. No, no. That's not how you, you can't go by that. When it talks about by their fruits, you shall know them as talking about false prophets, by what they 
comes out of their mouth, their words. It's not talking about, well, let me look at somebody's actions. I can tell if they're saved or not by their actions. No, you can't because all of our own righteousness are as filthy rags. And in this flesh, we're still going to sin and thought, word, and deed every day. And we're not going to be without sin, sinless, unlike, unlike Jesus is until we get up to heaven. That's when we're going to be, you know, like him, just exactly when we like him, we get our glorified bodies. Now, yielding to the Holy Spirit that we have, and volition of our own volition in this life to do that but the pro the thing is is not everybody is going to do that okay everybody's not going to yield to the holy spirit and they and as a result they, they remain a babe in christ they never grow and they wind up at the judgment seat of christ with nothing to show for and they'll have wood hay and stubble all of their works will be burned up but they're going to be saved so as so yeah, as so so yeah, as by fire. I was trying to get that right. Um, and the lost, those that have rejected Christ, are going to wind up at the great white throne judgment, where he says to them, and it's in Matthew seven twenty one through twenty three. That's the talking about the great white throne judgment, where people say. Lord, Lord, didn't I do this many wonderful, I did all these things in your name, you know, and he says, not everyone who says, un, says unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Now, the will of the Father, you do it, but it's one time thing. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to believe on the one whom he had sent, that everyone, that this is the will of the Father, John chapter 6, verses 39 through 40, that all that believe, see the Son, believes on Him, and, you know, they have everlasting life. They put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what He did for them. That's, that's what the will of the Father is. So, see, just because people, you know, you might see people being religious or put a religious facade on, and they're doing, but they're, they're trying to live this good and holy, righteous life. You can't just look at that and say, well, they're automatically saved. And this person over here that's doing no telling what, oh, well, they're not really saved because they're do. So you don't, you can't go really go by that because there are a lot of people that are going to be in heaven that you're not going to expect, that we're not even going to expect, would even think that would be there. And, you know, you know, there's, you know, many religious people that wind up going to hell. They're on the broad road that leads to destruction, that leads to hell, that many is going down. The so few that are going to heaven are the ones that have put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Faith, see, salvation is by faith, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. We can't add anything to that and say, well, see there. You got to do this and walk this way and talk, you know, and do this all. And, and comp see, when people do that, they complicate it. And I, and there may be well-meaning people that do that. But what I'm saying is is, is we have to keep the, 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 the uh, uh, salvation simple and not complicate it because that's a lot of times when people do that, it confuses people and it causes doubt and it causes all sorts of confusion. You know, we're, 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 you know, when Jesus was talking about taking up his cross and following him and stuff, that's discipleship. That's not salvation. See, this, you have to rightly divide the word of truth and that discipleship and salvation is not the same thing. Salvation is a free gift. It's not of ourselves. We receive it by faith alone in Christ alone what he did. Now, discipleship is our reasonable service to God. That's what we should do. Okay, after salvation, we should do this and that, and, but we don't have to. That's the thing, see. It says should, should, and must is t are two different things. Ephesians 2.10, you know, we're created under good works, you know, that God has ordained that we 
should walk in them. It doesn't say that we better or we must, or if you don't walk in them, you're lost and you're going to hell. It don't say that. It says that you should walk in them. See, and then James it talks about when it says, well, faithful not works is dead. Well, people quote that a lot, and they'll say even the demons believe believe and tremble well here's the thing they believe there's one god but they don't believe on the lord jesus christ they can't be saved anyway demons fallen angels and all this you know they can't be saved no jesus christ died for human beings people like me and you okay and the demons saying that the demons believe, well, they believe there's one God. The Muslims believe that there's one God, but it's a false God. They believe uh, there's a lot of false religions. The Buddhists, they believe in one God, and, and that's a false God. They don't believe in the true and living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't believe on him. So, and the faith without works thing, what, what that is, that's just talking about justification in the eyes of man. If we see someone in need or, we're, or we don't show our faith, then how is that going to help them? They can't see our faith, but does that mean if your faith, you know, faith without works is dead, does that mean, well, you automatically, if you're not doing works, then you're not saved. You don't have faith. No, it doesn't. Because there is a such thing as a dead faith, but if the faith is dead, it is no, it's not working, but it's still a faith, a saving faith, because it's in the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the object of our faith. That's what the object of our faith is, the Lord Jesus Christ, him and his finished work and what he did, and it's all about that. You know, I mean, we were not to complicate that and try to muddy the waters and mix it in with the two and say, well, you know, and, and mix grace and works or law and grace into it. Because if you do that, you muddy the waters of it and it causes all kind of confusion. The faith without works, what James will say, and he's talking about before man but before God, we're justified, Romans 4, 5, 4, verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believes on him, it justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone, our faith. To him that does not work, that does no work, but believes on him, it justifies the ungodly. It, his faith is counted for righteousness. Their faith is counted for righteousness. We, we get, we receive the imputed righteousness of Christ. Okay, and then we pass from death unto life, from death to life. Before we were in Adam, but now we are in Christ. You know, before you, you, you know, before we were, you know, before I was in Christ, I was. In Adam, I was, you know, the old man. The old man and the new man are two different things. You know, when, when you get born again, the flesh is still there. It's not eradicated. It's not done. It's still there. Uh, now, Paul did say I die daily and stuff like it. And, and, of course, we should do that by yielding to the Holy Spirit, the guiding and leading of the Holy Spirit. But not everybody does that. There are some people that do, and then there's people that choose not to, but it comes down to a choice to whether you do it or not. You can't, you know, it's not for me to tell somebody and to make somebody tell somebody how to live because it's not my place to do that because I'm not, you know, I have stuff I, you know, struggle with. I'm, I'm, I, I, and, and, you know, when my flesh dwells, no good thing. And I, I'm, I, you know, sin and thought, word and deed every day myself. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke and lie and say that I don't because, you know, we said that we have no sin when we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And people actually deceive themselves into thinking that they do not sin. See, when our flesh is what's sinful. But when it says the one that when, when the, the, uh, that does not sin, that, you know, God, or see, his seed abides in him, we're born again of corruptible, not of corruptible seed, but of 
incorruptible. The incorruptible, this fle flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's not going to go into go to heaven. Only our spirit, our you know soul, and you know our spirit, not the the flesh. His flesh is you know full of sin, sickness, and death, and that's why we must die after we leave this body. We leave the corruption, the corruptible, and we put on we put on incorruption. And we put on Christ when we believe on Him. Then we're we're you know we're still in this fleshly body as long as we're on this earth and breathing, of course. And we're subject to fall short in all kind of ways and even willfully. But the good news is our sin has already been paid for two thousand years ago on the cross. All of our sin was put on Christ because. He, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, all of our sin, past, present, and future was placed on him. But in order to have eternal life, in order to have salvation, you must receive it as a free gift. You must receive it, and it is all by faith. After you do that, you're baptized into the body of Christ and you know, you've put on Christ, you know, spiritually speaking, you but then but you don't know when it happens and feeling it and I'm not about it. We don't go by all of our you know, it's easy sometimes to go by and say, Well, I have a feeling and I feel this and I feel or I feel this or I don't feel that. Well, we don't always go by what we feel, we go by what God's word says. We walk by faith, not by sight. Because if we were walking by sight all the time and what we could see and say, well, I see and I feel this, I don't go by what I feel. I go by just what God's word says because I'm not walking by, you know, I walk by faith, not by sight. You know, I go, I just go by, believe what God's word says. If, whether, if I don't always feel, you know, there's people that may not, that, that may be saved that don't always feel it, but are you going to start going by your feelings or are you going to go by what God's word says? Because first John five thirteen, we have the assurance of salvation. Uh, it says these things I've written on you that believe on the name of the son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. You can know that you have it, not cross your fingers and then hope you live good enough or you, or you're good out when you're bad, you know, and that's the misconception that people have, well, well, good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. Well, the Bible says that none of us are good. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 6, 23. We deserve to go to hell for our sin. We deserve death, which is, you know, hell forever, a torment, eternally, to be eternally, damned forever and i mean that's the way that it is but that's the bad news but the good news is that jesus christ took down that sin barrier that he's the only there's only one uh, mediator between god and man the man christ jesus you know i mean and, and there's not any other name given among he under heaven among men by which where we must be saved and that name is jesus christ and he alone he not 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 Buddha, not Allah, not you know the Dalai Lama, not Confucius or any, anything like that. It's Jesus Christ alone. He's the only name that saves, and that's the only that's the only way to to, to heaven. I mean, it's not no you know he is the door. When he said, "I am the door," you know, and to, oh, he's the door. He's the way. To have the only way, faith alone and Christ alone, that's the narrow way that few people are finding that leads to life, eternal life that leads to heaven. Because most people, the majority of people are complicating the gospel and they're trusting in their good deeds and they think, well, my, uh, well, I'm, I'm religious, so I, I'm going to be good enough. That's, God will be good and upset me. He'll accept my works well not really because it's going it's all done before him it's all it's all uh filthy rags it's it's you know i mean it's not 
it's not going to do you any good if you haven't done the will of the Father, which is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ simply by faith. You receive him to as many as received him, to them he gave, he gave power to become the sons of God, even to him that believe on his name. So when some, you know, you'll say, well, is that all I got to do is believe? Well, yeah, you're, but when, and I'm, let me define what I mean by that. I don't want nobody to misconstrue what I'm saying and all that. When I say believe, that's you're having faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. When you have faith, salvation is not a process. It's a one-time thing that happens instantaneously. You trust Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You can't, and you can't ever lose it. Not even if some people say, "Well, you can walk away." Well, why did Jesus say in John chapter ten, around verse twenty? six or 28 he said all that the father gives to me i will in no wise cast out my father is greater than them all that, that and, and no man can pluck them out of my hand so if you say that you can pluck yourself out you're saying you're greater than god and are you greater than god no you're not none of us are so you know <clears throat> When someone says, "Well, you just mean believe," you say, "Well, you just can't believe," and the, and 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 someone is more to it than that. Well, that's not what Scripture says, because the Apostle Paul was saying in Acts chapter sixteen, verses thirty-one and verses thirty and thirty-one, the Philippian jailer, where he said, "Sirs, to Paul and Silas, what must I do?" to be saved and they said believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house you know and believe you know that's to put your faith your trust in to depend on it's to rely on something as being true to feel sure of of the truth of something okay that's what that is i mean it's not what people says well yeah you just believe in your head and or whatever and you you know, all of a sudden, there's no such, either it comes down to this, either you believe or you don't. There's no in-between when it comes to that. You believe or you don't believe. And those that have believed, and what I mean by that, that's the personal faith they have in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work on their behalf. And their sins are paid for like my sins are paid for. Jesus Christ is my living receipt. I have no sins to pay for because they've all already done been paid for. I'm a million miles from perfect. That's why I needed a Savior. And anybody that, you know, that a lot of people, you know, that don't want, a lot of people that don't want to believe it's because the God of this world, little G, has minded, has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the glorious gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ shall shine unto them, you know, lest they hear it and they believe it. And it's sad that people, man, see, man's ego, man's pride, that's what a lot of it keeps from them, keeps them from coming to the knowledge of the truth, keeps them from having, you know, being saved because, they say, well, I don't, I'm not a sinner. You know, they don't see their need for a Savior. They, they say, well, I'm good. You know, I'm not a sinner. I'm okay. You know, I, I'm real, I go to church. I, I, I belong. I've been going to church every time the doors open for 20 something years. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Presbyterian. I'm, I'm whatever you want to call it, but it's not going to be. In heaven, well, there's Baptists, you get on this side, and Presbyterians and Pentecostals on this side, and this take this line over here. It's not going to be nothing like that. The only ones in heaven is the redeemed that's believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, received salvation by faith. We receive it by faith, not by nothing else, not by faith, but faith plus our good works and deeds that we're trying to do to be right there's only one way to be right with God. Yeah, it says you must be born again. That's how you are born again when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. To believe on him, you received him. You've received the free gift of salvation. And that's all it is to it. It's not a matter of saying, you know, you know, the, 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 see, 
when it comes to that, there's not something that we can just come to a consensus on and have a discussion. It's a matter about what saying what God, you know, believe in what God's word says and, 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 and just saying amen, because that's all I can say is amen, and I, and I believe it. What I've read, I believe it. What, what, you know, I know that I'm going to heaven because I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I've received him as my Savior. I believe that he paid for all of my sins on the cross, past, present, and future with his own blood. I don't, he's taken all of my sins and, and, and paid for all of them. All of my sins are paid for. That is the only way, only reason I'm going to heaven is because of what he did for me. It's not because of something something good that I did and say, well, look at me, see how, how, how good I am because I'm really not. And if you're honest with, your, with yourself, you'll see that you're not any good either because the Apostle Paul himself even said in my flesh dwells no good thing. Um, but we need to be careful and not mix salvation in with discipleship and not tell people, well, you, you know, well, if you are not doing this and this and you're living this way and that way, well, you must not be saved. That's not our place to say that. That That is not, that is when someone does that, they're, they're placing judgment on someone's salvation, you know, all that I go by is when somebody says the testimony that they give me, if they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and, you know, they, they trust him as their savior, you know, and they, they know, you know, they believe that what he did for them, that he paid for all of their sins on the cross. And I mean, you know, Hey, you know, I mean, that's what, that's all that we can go by is someone's testimony that they, te that they say, because when it says by their fruit, you will know them, it's talking about by the words that they speak that comes out of their mouth. Now, if they're telling you that you must work your way to heaven, you just, you got to do, you got to work your way there and be good enough. Well, it's not going to happen. There's many people that does that and they're, they're going to wind up in hell. Because they didn't, they did not do the will of the Father, and the will of the Father, comparing Scripture with Scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, we're, we, you know, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, you know, and the Apostle Paul was saying to the Galatians, I believe it's in chapter three of Galatians, he said, "Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you?" You know, and, and, you know, who has fooled you, you know, he's saying, in other words, and I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you to the grace of Christ and to another gospel, which is not another. There's not another gospel that can save you, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. If we are an angel preaching the other gospel, uh, that's in Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9 that I'm quoting now. Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, If we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel on you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. And he said, So I, I said before, so I say now again, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel on you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. In other words, let him be down. They're preaching an accursed gospel. They're, 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 what that is is someone, they're not preaching the death, burial, and resurrection is what is, was given to the Apostle Paul. Now, the death, burial, and resurrection, you can also find that in Isaiah 53. Uh, you know, the gospel can be found in anywhere in the scripture, of course. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying, you know, it, and it says in Romans chapter 2, verse 16, it says, In the day, when God shall judge the secrets of men, um, you know, by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. That's he, and the reason Paul says that's my gospel is because he's not saying specifically, oh, well, it's my gospel. He said it's, that's because it's the gospel of Christ, that it was revealed to him, but it was given to him. That That's why he says that. And the, the, the secrets of men will be judged. You know, not everything 
you know, this done in secret, everything will be made known, you know, and all this, that, and other, but it's, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm just, I think, you know, sometimes, you know, people do get mixed up on stuff and then it, and it does confuse people. That's how come I always try to stick to the simplicity that's in Christ, you know, and I'm not going to back off. I'm not going to back off from that because you're te if you're telling people, if you're, if, if you're telling people that they have to do something, they, but, but when they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they receive him by faith because that's by faith that we're, it's by grace through faith that we're saved. Salvation, it, talking about salvation is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, if it was by works, then we could all boast and say, hey, look at me. See, I'm and I'm going to heaven because I stopped doing X, Y, and Z or A, B, and C. No, that's nothing. It ain't got nothing to do with that. Your, after salvation, your life our life is dead really as far as that goes and hid with Christ in God, really. And then when Christ hears our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear to him in glory. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, I think it is. It's where it, it, for if you're uh, dead and your life is hid with Christ in God, and it's to set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth, you know. And we're, we, we, you know, we have the mind of Christ already, and then, but sometimes we want to walk, you know, get out in the flesh. That's all of us. We all do. If we, if you say that you don't, then you're, if you're honest with yourself, you'll admit I act out in the flesh a lot of times. I do every day. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say what I don't. Yeah, all of my sins are forgiven, and I'm on my way to heaven, but it's not because of something I did. It's not me saying, well, I'm working. It's like a song, uh, song Alan Jackson sings that he, he's, he's talking about working hard to get to heaven. Well, it ain't nothing about working hard to get to heaven. You either get you going or you're not going. I mean, it's not saying, well, I'm working real hard and I'm trying to, Oh, I want to be holy and all this. Look, I think it's in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14 or 14, verse 10, somewhere along there. It says, he has he perfected them forever by one offering, Jesus Christ. He has perfected them forever that are sanctified. We're sanctified once and for all by Jesus Christ when he... The, that he when he died to pay for all of our sins on the cross, we're sanctified forever by one up by his by that one offering by Jesus Christ. You know, and you know now growing in grace. That's something that we should do by the like I said by the leading of the Holy Spirit. But will everybody do it? Sadly, no, they won't. But does that mean they're not saved because they're living? You know, uh, whatever kind of lifestyle they're living, no, it does not. You cannot go by someone's lifestyle and say, well, see, that that, that person's not saved because they're living this way, but oh, they, this person's really doing this, so that automatically means they're saved. No, it does not. Because there are lost people that are that have not been born again that, 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 that do good things and do good deeds and good works, and they're... They're, you know, they're not saved. So what makes it that you know that you can't go by that? You, you, you it, it, because you don't, you know. I mean, there are people to really put it in layman's terms. They they're saved and they they're going to heaven, but they may, you know, not grow in grace. They may not do it, never do anything for the Lord. But does that mean that they're not saved? No, it does not. That mean that don't mean they're any less saved than you and I are. They're just as much as saved as you and I are, but they just remain a babe in Christ because they don't ever grow. They don't never mature.
but that doesn't mean well they're not going to heaven they oh well they lost their salvation you couldn't lose your salvation if you wanted to once you're saved you're sealed with the holy spirit of promise you can't break that seal and god can't break that seal because god is not a man that he should lie nor a man that he should repent and god if we believe not he abided faithful yet he for he cannot he can't deny himself so you know there's not it's it's, a, it's not a process or oh, well, well i'm working my way up and i'm i'm trying to get holier and holier until i'm just so you know it's not you know it's one thing it's really say growing in grace really is what it really is and you're and you're and you're allowing the holy spirit yielding to him and allowing him to work in you that and through you but everybody don't do that. There are believers that are going to get there that do not do that. They remain babes in Christ. That's the way that it is. You know, do I understand all of it? No, I don't. But that's the way it is. And that's, I mean, and that's just, you know, all that I can really say on my, about that. I mean, I'm not, you know, I just, you know, but we need to, you know, really just, when I, I guess to say um, it's like when people compare themselves to other people, well, my sin is better than your sin mindset, saying, well, my sin won't sin condemn me, but yours will because you drink alcohol or you do this or you smoke cigarettes or whatever. Well, I mean, when you start doing that, that's a self-righteous thing right there. And there's not going to be the, the, the self-righteous are the hardest ones to, to get saved, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, because they think that there's something in them and they think they got to do, Oh, well, I got to do something else. You know, what, what Jesus Christ did wasn't good enough. The blood he shed wasn't good enough for me. So I got to work real hard to do something myself to make myself right with God. And there's people that will say, well, you need to get right with God. You know, brother, you need to get right with God. Well, they tell you that, but they don't tell you how to. They don't tell they didn't, they tell, they, you, you, you got right with God when you believe the gospel. That's the way it is. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that's how you're made right with God. Because you have his imputed righteousness. When he looks at you, he sees his son. He sees he sees the because you've you have the imputed righteousness of Christ, not you know, uh Titus three verse five, not by works of righteousness which we have done, <coughs> but according to his mercy he has saved us to the uh washing of on the word and renewing of the Holy Ghost, you know, regeneration, you know, renewing of the Holy Ghost. Um, but, you know, but that's the only way really to have peace with God is, is, you know, you, you received him by faith. You, you received the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. You believe that what he done for you was enough. And, and it's sad that people that say that you have to do more than believe. It's really like they're. They're they're spitting in the face of Jesus Christ and say and, and on the cross of Christ saying, "Well, what you did wasn't good enough. I gotta still work to do something myself." And sadly, those they're not really trusting in Christ alone. They're actually trusting in that plus, and they may be trusting in Christ, but they're trusting in that plus their good life, their good, you know, well, well, you know. It's not of any merit of our own. It's by faith alone and Christ alone. And that's, I mean, it's that simple as that. I mean, and, you know, when, uh, not when he was, when Jesus said, well, God is, well, man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. He's saying, you know, I think it's in Mark or somewhere around in the, the book of Mark where he was saying that, um, uh, Within uh, the four gospel accounts, the gospel uh, uh, of Mark, he said, uh, "He said, you know, 
Though he's, uh, I'm trying to get my wording right here. He said, uh, you know, that with God, is with man, it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And he's talking to, he's saying to the disciples, he said, it is easier for a rich man or in a, to the, for the camp to, for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. In other words, he's, he's saying it for, for it's impossible for man trying to save himself, getting set by it, it. But with God, all things are possible. It's impossible for a man to get, to, you know, for a per, you know, person to try to save their own self and get to heaven on their own. You know, somebody thinks they're going to do that, they're going to wind up in hell. That's really as lovingly that, as I can really tell it, that I can say. And that's, you know, there are a lot of religious people that wind up in hell, popes, every, whatever you want to say it. There could be a lot of them that are there, the people that, well, they lived a good moral life, so they're automatically saved, not necessarily you don't see that's the, the, the thing that people go by. They they and they say, well, see there, that person's must not be saved because they're doing X, Y, and Z, A, B, and C. When you haven't stopped doing X, Y, and Z or A, B, and C. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I mean it's it's clearly evident to me of what scripture says that salvation is a free gift. It is not by anything that we do. It's all of Christ and what he did for us. You know, John six forty seven, when 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 Jesus said, Verily, verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Verily, verily means well, he's saying truly, truly. He's saying he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. You know, it's not saying, well, you have it until you you lose it. You stop believing or you sin too much. No, you can't out sin the blood of Christ. I'm going to tell you that right now. God's grace is bigger than any sin. So don't start putting these gauges on sin and saying, oh, well, you know, that, that you know, we don't look at that. We go by the what somebody t what they the testimony that they tell us and it's saying by their fruits you shall know them that's clearly talking about false prophets within the context of Matthew chapter seven because they're going to be come, come to be in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves you know they're not you know they're they're preaching a false gospel they they say you got to Faith plus works and all this is not, not, no, they get that mixed up for one thing in the first place. And you got to rightly divide. And when you don't do that, that causes all kind of confusion. But I thank you all for watching. And I hope that this has been a blessing to you. And until next time, God bless and take care.